ago on the island of Okoto who all lived in harmony. Six tribes of villagers lived together in peace under the guidance of their elders, the protectors. And each villager would receive a special gift from the island's most popular celebrities, the mask makers. Ikimu and his brother Makuta created great masks in their forge inside the city. Masks of strength, speed, x-ray vision, and more were forged using gold and magic derived from the six elements themselves. While each of the two brothers was respected and appreciated, Ikimu's masks were the most popular. Makuta grew jealous of his brother and forged an evil plan. In a fit of rage and jealousy, created the Mask of Ultimate Power. Containing all six of the elements, it had the power to destroy the island completely. When Makuta put on the mask, it took control over him and started to tear the island apart. Horrified by what his brother had done, Ikimu had no choice but to act. Knocked the mask from Makuta's face. When the dust had settled, Makuta was gone, and Ikimu was in a deep slumber, his great mask of creation nowhere to be seen. Laid to rest by the protectors, Ikimu was left behind in the city as the villagers fled the oncoming darkness. For a thousand years and many generations, the protectors managed to keep their tribes safe. But one day a new threat arrived that threatened their very existence, the Lord of Skull Spiders. Using his army of skull spiders to take over villagers to do his bidding, the Lord of Skull Spiders started laying waste to the island in an effort to find the Mask of Creation. The six protectors all fled to the Temple of Time in a last-ditch effort to save their island, to fulfill an ancient prophecy that would bring about the greatest heroes in all of existence. When times are dark and all hope seems lost, the protectors must unite one from each tribe, evoke the power of past and future, look to the skies for an answer. When the stars align, six comets will send timeless heroes to save the island. From the sky fell six comets, each containing a hero of epic proportions, a Toa. Crashing in the six regions of the island, each Toa met with their protectors and learned why they were there. Oh mighty Toa, I welcome you to the island of Okoto. Myself and the other protectors have summoned you to help save us from a rising darkness. The Lord of Skull Spiders threatens to control every last Okotan until he finds the Mask of Creation, which he will use to destroy the world! If I have been summoned for that purpose, then let us find this Mask of Creation first and save the island. It is not that simple. If you are to stand a chance against the Lord of Skull Spiders, you must first find your Golden Mask of Jungle, which will grant you the ability to use your elemental powers. Only then can you raise Ikimu from his slumber and get him to help you find the Mask of Creation. Do you know the way? Yes. Then let us go quickly. And it was so that the six Toa each set out on a journey to find their golden masks of power. Liwa, Toa of Jungle, chopped vines and climbed trees in the region of jungle. Onua, Toa of Earth, dug through the ground in search of his mask. Pohatu, Toa of Stone, walked through blistering heat in the region of stone, while battling skull scorpions. Gali, Toa of Water, swam through Okoto's region of water, searching for a sunken temple that held her mask. Kopaka, Toa of Ice, made sure not to slip as he traversed ice fields up a steep mountain. And Tahu, Toa of Fire, lava boarded through a volcano to find his mask. In time, the Toa arrived at their shrines to behold their golden masks. Wasting no time in putting them on, the Toa found themselves able to now wield great power. I hate scorpions. With their elemental powers acquired, the Toa were now ready for the next part of their quest, their journey into the ancient city. Arriving at the gate to the city of the Mask Makers, the six Toa met for the first time. After a brief argument over who would lead the team, the Toa set their sights on fighting their new foe, the Lord of Skull Spiders. At first, the Toa were no match for the terrible beast, for they were not unified in their attacks. The Lord of Skull Spiders could not survive the onslaught of six on one. With their master gone, attacks on the villages around Okoto ceased. Confident in their power, the Toa marched into the ancient city, ready for anything. But, finding Ikimu would not be as easy as they thought. Makuta's spirit lingered over the city, and he brought an army of skeleton warriors back from the grave to challenge the Toa.
working their way throughout the city, the Toa encountered other threats, such as Skull Scorpios, which attempted to claim Boatu's mask, and Skull Basher, who tried to claim Onua's. Finally, the Toa located Inkimu's tomb. Inside, they found him in a coffin, grayed from the centuries of the dark. Somehow knowing how to awaken him, the Toa all placed their hands on him, and in a flash of blinding light, Ikimu the Mask Maker was awake for the first time in centuries. Rising from his tomb, Ikimu relayed information to the Toa that Makuta's minions had made off with his mask. Makuta's most powerful minion, the Skull Grinder, had taken the Mask of Creation to Ikimu's forge to destroy it. Without it, Makuta could return unchallenged. Inside the Great Forge, the Toa found the Skull Grinder, realizing that he was outnumbered though, Skull Grinder instead put the mask on. With power coursing through him, he lunged at the Toa. The Toa battled valiantly as Ikimu worked to rebuild his hammer, but their efforts were not enough. One by one, Skull Grinder ripped the golden masks from the Toa's face, draining them of their powers and energy. Without their mighty powers, the Toa were easily cast aside by the might of Skull Grinder, but they did not give up. They did everything in their power to stand against evil, to do their duty. Zikimu finished reconstruction on his hammer, and he used it to reclaim the mask of creation. Exhausted, the Toa slipped into unconsciousness as Zikimu started work on repairing their masks. When the masks were repaired, Ikimu placed them on the Toa's faces, and their powers and strength returned. Their masks had not just been repaired though, they had been improved. In gratitude for saving the island, Ikimu had gifted the Toa with even more powerful masks than they had had before. As the six heroes looked out across the city to see the villagers of Okoto returning for the first time in a thousand years, they felt pride, as they knew they could stand against whatever evil Makuto would send at them next. Ibu had not been completely defeated, however. It is once again on the move, as Umarak the Shadow Hunter starts his hunt for the six elemental creatures in a bid to recover Makuta's lost mask of control. Will the Toa succeed in their quest to save the island, or will it fall into eternal darkness? You can continue the fight by watching Bionicle The Journey to One, now streaming on Netflix.